Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial about using a Vive Tracker to control a virtual camera in Unreal Engine. And from here we'll start adding on and go through other things, but this is kind of the beginning steps of getting control of things. Before I even get started with anything, I wanted to make, make sure to tell you to have Steam VR up and running, and here I do, and I have a Vive Tracker loaded. If you have a Vive Tracker and want to add it to your system, you just click on these three bars right up here and just go to Devices, and you can to controller settings is that the one you go to wait wait that's not the one hold on sorry you go to devices oh pair controller down here where it says i want to pair a different type of controller it'll give the option to add your vibe tracker if you want so anywho make sure this is up and running before you even get started once that's done we can go into games and we're going to go into the third person we don't need any ray tracing or starter content and we'll just go create i want to do the third person so that i have a rig to film so that's why i'm using the third person i could also bring in a third person another way but this is just an easier way to do it again like i always do i'll go into edit edit preferences and i'll type in orbit and always enable that I, i've mentioned this a hundred times before but you hit alt select something and you can orbit around it i honestly don't know how you could navigate without that control just to get started i'm going to go to characters mannequin We'll go to animations. Oh, not animations. Third person characters, mannequins, animations, Quinn. And we'll just bring in her standing idol. Just so we have something to film. Okay, and then that takes care of that. Primarily what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be getting everything set up. So right now, the first phase of this is to go back into our plugins. And apparently this is becoming the standard operating procedure for Unreal is that you've got to go activate your plugin. So there's three or four that we're looking for right now. We want to go to virtual camera and click that one. Surprisingly, that's still in beta. And then we want to go to live link and enable that. And then we want to enable Live Link XR. This one's probably the most important. And that's in beta two. And the last one is Steam VR. Steam VR right here. And that should do it for us. So we'll just go restart. You can save selected. And then it just takes a minute for everything to load back in. And unfortunately, there's quite a few steps involved with this. I'm thinking as we get into Unreal 6 and 7, some of this stuff will already be set up for us. So it's kind of like it's beyond just getting a cake mix from the store. It's like you got to start from scratch on some of this. So we have to build our own blueprint. So I'm just going to kick back, look back here on the content level. So now we should have everything loaded up. And all we're doing in this phase of things is we're activating the live link. So we come into live link. We should, if everything's correct, we'll see the option to add our live link XR source. If you don't see it, chances are your VR system's not working for some reason, it's not loaded in, or there's just been some sort of glitch and you may have to restart. But anyway, we're just gonna go to live link XR source, leave it at 60, and then just go add. And if we click here, it shows our device ID and we click here. There's really no other settings we need to mess with here. And that should be good. So it's up and running, that's fantastic. Now here's kind of the thrust of this whole tutorial and this is just creating the system that we're gonna to use to control the virtual camera. So to do that, we're gonna create a blueprint and we're gonna right click, go to blueprint class, actor, and we're gonna call this VR, underscore cam and that's good and then I'll just double click it and go into here there's quite a few steps in here and hopefully I don't miss any but it's highly possible <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go add and we're going to add that live link so go to live link controller and click this and it comes in and then if we come over here we want to under subject representation we want to pick the tracker and we can look down here I don't see anything else that we need to do there's this one roll this is off by default so we don't have to worry about that then what we're going to do is we're going to add an arrow component here and we're going to call this one 
tracker and then we're going to add another arrow component and we're going to call this one camera and then we're going to make the camera a child of the tracker we're not really going to they're on top of each other right now and we're not going to change that because in this scenario that we're using and you'll see at the very end of this is that I have the I'm just I just have the tracker I don't have it attached to a camera but if there were a camera involved there would might be some offset distance between the the tracking device and the camera so that's why these two are here so you can offset these from each other if you want but for our purposes there'll be no need for that but I wanted to show you that it's good just to have it both in there okay and then what we're going to do is we can come over to the event graph and we don't need any of this stuff so we'll just delete all that and if we click on component and we come down here we want this this will keep give us a lot of data coming in from our live link and it basically acts as a tick constantly running constantly giving updates on where the tracker is in terms of its location and rotation its position and rotation there's a bunch of little things involved with this so one of the things that I want to do here is we we're going to create a number of variables so we're just come down here and click here and the first variable that we're going to add is one for the city camera and then we're going to add another variable, and we'll make that public we'll add another variable for transform well we can call this past transform and then one more is going to be for smoothing and this is just a basic functionality to kind of smooth the jitteriness from the Vive tracker okay so then we have those all set we go compile and save and now we can go modify we want these all set to public so on the city camera this is going to variable type and we want it to be a city camera actor when you click here we want object reference so that's always tricky because this window pops up and we want it as an object reference there's nothing that we need to do on that on the transform we want this as a transform variable so that's good and then on smoothing we want this as a float let's compile and save and for our initial value we'll put 15 and you can play with this number to see how much it smooths things out or if it makes things too smooth or not smooth enough and you can play around with that but 15 is a good number to start with so then just one by one we're just going to piece this blueprint together ultimately this should be i think come in as a pre-built function but for right now we have to build all of this ourselves so the first thing we're going to do is take camera and drag it onto the scene and then we're going to from here let me zoom in a little bit we're going to drag out and get world transform i'm sorry get world transform we'll get that and then we are going to pull in our smoothing amount here get smoothing and from here we're going to pull out and get multiply and actually i want to break the link there because i want this to go into the bottom right there and then we're going to pull out from here and get what's called a lerp transform and let me go ahead and break this node too just for so i'm consistent i want this to go into the b and then we're going to pull this pass transform out here get it and plug it in right here and then from here we're going to bring the delta time down and pop it in right there so there's just a few more steps on this it's not too much to do but basically this just allows for smoothing and then this goes in here just like that okay and then we're going to get the let's see we're going to pull in the cine camera variable right here and off of it we're going to go set actor location and rotation so let me see if it's letting me have that set actor sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't right here it is okay fantastic 
and believe it or not we're on the uh, we're on the home stretch so here you got to right click and go split pin and this one's gonna go into here and this one's gonna go into here for our location we're not gonna be using scale and then this is gonna come in there like that and I think we're almost done. We just need one more thing. Okay, and once we're at this point, the last thing we gotta do is set our transform. So I just click and drag this onto the scene and put it as set. Right click here and split the, the strut. And then we can put this in there and this in there. And lastly, this goes in here. And then we go compile and save. So we end up, that's our final blueprint that smooths, provides smoothing to our virtual camera. And that's really it. And then, okay, I, I'm back kind of, I hate to say all hell broke loose. But <laughs> okay, so here we are and our blueprint is done. So first things first is this is really, hard for me to sometimes get my mind around what's happening here but the one thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to create I'll just call a, a blank actor basically this is functioning as a a null object if you want and we can just leave it called actor for now but we're going to parent our camera rig the entire thing to this so we can move it around in this space we won't be able to move it because our VR camera is going to be getting all the location data from the tracker so you're not going to be able to move it because it's it's getting its location information from the tracker so we can't really move the camera so anyway I just want to get that in position because I'm going to need it and then what we can do is we can go ahead and drag this onto our scene and we don't really see anything right now oh if you look over here you can see the data that it's coming in so this is our vr cam and that's what i'm talking about we can't move it because it's getting all the data from the tracker in reality the tracker is sitting right in front of me right now it's not oriented or anything but i'm going to show you the this is the main part of this whole thing once you get the blueprint done that's 50 percent. this is the other 50 percent. so now what we're going to do is we can go ahead and let's parent this I don't know why we say parent but it's really I'm childing it to this actor so I'm just dragging it up there now I can use this actor to move the VR camera around when the time comes if I click on it and hit the space bar I can use this to move the VR cam so there's some offset between them but that's that's fine and this is it right here this is the VR cam right here See when I click on it. So now we can do is bring in the cine camera itself. So all this work just for this. <laughs> so now here's where I got messed up before. So this is a gotcha. So I'll click to bring in the camera and there it is. The problem is when you bring it in, it's completely offset from this position. So you got to come over, make sure you're on the cine camera. First, let's go ahead and child it to the VR cam and you notice when we do the location X, Y, and Z and rotation are all way off. So we have to zero all those out. So you have to be sure to zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Come down here on rotation, zero, zero, zero. And now you'll see it's in the correct orientation. Is it? Not really. So this is the main part that was just confusing the hell out of me. And so so it's all working right now. If we click on the actor here, we can move the camera around. It's kind of struggling a little bit. But obviously that's not the position that we want the camera in. So if I take my VR tracker in reality and I orient it like I think it should be, then our camera is responds appropriately in all directions. So I'm going to stop the video right here and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm sorry to be shooting this with my cell phone, but I'm kind of in a jam right now. So anyway, here's the Vibe Tracker. And for this to track properly to the camera, it actually needs to be 
facing, a lot of people want it lying flat, but it actually needs to be facing like that with the green light on the downside. And once you get, what I have here is I actually have a iPhone tripod holder, and then I have a, the strap that, I don't know if it's called track strap or something just to hold it on there. And what I found is that the, the tracker needs to be in the proper physical orientation. You can think of it like the gimbal on a, the gimbal, like when you're, when you're balancing either a, a drone or a steady, you know, the old style steady cam rigs, you know, not the motorized one, but the, the one, because if you think about it, this is on the, uh, it's on its own X, Y, and Z location and its own X, Y, and Z rotation. And so that's six coordinates that are off. And that's why if you don't put this vibe tracker in the proper orientation to line it up with the, the um, to line it correctly in the 3D space, it, it's wonky as hell because you have its six coordinates coming in and then in reality, it's not in sync. So you have to, I think the best thing to do is to physically adjust the vibe tracker in reality so that it matches how the camera should be in the 3D space. Now, if you don't want to go through all this to have this, you can just, I realize you can just get something like this, like an L bracket, and then just mount that too on the tripod. But I just wanted to explain, this is the orientation that I found to get the camera to be correctly in 3D space. It, it wasn't laying down, I had it laying down. I, I tried in, in, in different orientations. So I don't know how well you can see this, but it's hard to hold my camera. I don't have a second tripod, but as I move this, on, I have it on the tripod. I don't know if you can see the camera at the same time. So that's what I'm talking about, the camera, the vibe tracker being on the, the right orientation and physical reality so that it matches the virtual camera in the 3D space. Okay, I'm back and so the one thing I noticed is you can see the arrow in here. So what we're gonna to have to do is go back into our our blueprint here and turn turn this the visibility off on the camera and on the tracker too. So turn the visibility off, pile, and save that. So now I'm in the pilot active view and I have everything rigged up like you just saw. And I'm just turning gently on the tripod now, just like that. And you can notice it just, you can see the subtle shake. It's come loose a little bit. I need to tighten it up. And so if I want to move the camera, I can do, I can pan up now. And I can pan down. And if I need to physically move things, I can go to the actor and move that way too. And then of course, I, if I go back on the city camera actor, I have all my controls here to bring in focus and stuff like that. Uh, let me hit G. Can I turn off all the widgets here? And that's it. I mean, I won't say that's it, but it is a little bit of a process to get through this, but I believe this is the first key step toward working with cameras virtually and getting into virtual production and be, having the control in your hands of the camera in the 3D space. So that's a big step. And then in the later tutorials, I plan to get into even more depth about this. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time.